In this video, gonna be spending a day in the shop with Josh, removing and installing cam bearings, a camshaft, and maybe even some crankshaft action. So, not many hand tools are needed to do cam bearings on a C15, and a C15 is what we're gonna be working on here. Basically, you're gonna need an inch and a half wrench, 5 8 socket, a 5 8 wrench, a filter strap wrench, and some vice grips. But you're also going to need a whole bunch of specialty cam bearing tooling. And what we're doing here is removing and installing the cam bearings. And obviously the camshaft's been removed in this, but we'll be showing you how to install one later in the video, and you just have to do it in reverse. So what we're using here is Cat's bearing removal tool. And here is one of the older bearings that I've already removed. I believe this is number 4. Five bearing and you can see that the bearings are actually a jointed one piece bearing that's rolled over and you can see the joint right there now before we get deep into this I just wanted to say thank you for everyone that has supported the channel since last week Jonathan Wilbert Wilbur Dylan and Timothy and Thomas have donated since last week at adeptapeyahoo.com on PayPal thank you very much and let's get back to the video so these bearings have to be installed with the joint in a particular direction. Also, they have to be installed to a certain depth. And here's looking from the front of the engine. And since we have the head removed, you can see both ends. And it makes installing and removing the cam bearings much easier. You can actually see the joint there. And you can see that there are two oil supply holes through the bearing for the camshaft itself. And here's the rod assembly. Now... It takes a lot of force to remove and install these cam bearings, and you pretty much have to use the specialty tooling that is for this because there's really no way you would be driving these out or driving them in without damaging them without this tooling. Now, as you can see, there's a large fine threaded shaft here, and you're gonna use this large nut that's an inch and a half drive. And typically, between the nut and the cup, the cup being the portion that holds tension against the cylinder head, there's a bearing between those two. But on this particular one, I didn't have room to install the bearing, so I was using a washer with some engine oil. And I highly recommend using engine oil on the threads. It really helps not damage the nut or the threads themselves. Now, I'm going to speed this up by 500% to kind of show you how long it takes to pull each bearing out. And then I'll speed up when I'm installing them as well because it takes a long time. And you can see the head actually rocks each time. That's how much force it's taking to extract these bearings. Now remember, this head is quite heavy. It's close to 500 pounds, and it's rocking each time I'm trying to get this bearing out because they hold a lot of tension. Now once the bearing's out, you can see it right there. Uh, it should pop out, and the bearings are trash, of course. You don't ever want to reuse bearings you've removed. Now, this is the assembly with it removed from the cylinder head. You can see your sleeve and, guide, sleeve and guide tool there, and that's where the bearing sits. That's an old bearing. You have your shaft support that goes and holds the shaft in place, basically, so you don't have to hold it. This is the bearing I was talking about between the cup. That's the cup right there. And then your drive nut. And these extensions here, you would be using more of them if this head was installed on the engine, but since it's not... We don't need to be using all of them because we can go from the back and the front of the engine. Now, this is me just sped up removing the number two bearing. And similar thing, just this one actually has the bearing between the cup and the drive nut. And same thing, I've speed it, sped it up about 500% just to show you that I'm removing some of the other bearings. Don't worry, I'm going to be showing you how to install them also and how to install the camshaft. And as you can see, I've popped it out there. Now this is our cylinder head. After I got all the bearings out, I put it in our parts washer to kind of get it all cleaned up and get any dirt residue off it before we install the new bearings. Also blew it out with air. And with the bearings removed, you can see the oil supply line right there. That's what feeds oil to the cam bearings. And then the cam bearings have a groove in the middle of them that feeds oil to the two bearing holes to feed the camshaft. You can also see the witness marks where the old bearings were which is kind of helpful while installing the new ones, although you can't actually see the witness marks when you are installing them because the driver gets in the way. Now, you can see the witness marks on the front here of the cylinder head as well, and I put those little paint marks to show where the old holes were and where the joint was for the cam bearing itself, and there's looking down the bore for all of them. Now, 
Cat is particular on a couple things when installing cam bearings, the position of the joint and also the depth of the bearing from the front of the head. Now, the joint is supposed to be about 20 degrees from horizontal. Now, the bearings I pulled out, which were originally CAT installed, they were pretty much just horizontal. And here's the depth where you're measuring from the front of the cylinder head to the front of the bearing installed. And then we're going to measure that. Now, this is one of our newer bearings, or new bearings, actually. And you can see the joint they're talking about there. And then you can see the oil holes, and you can see the oil supply valley. Now, let's get ready to install this bearing. So this is the tools we're gonna to be using. This is the same tool we use to extract the bearings and it's a guide tool on one side and it's a bearing retainer on the other. Now I like to put a little dot of paint for my paint marker that I use the torque stripe stuff where the joints are. It really helps you see where the joint is because it's gonna be hard to tell when the joint's on there. You'll, it'll be surprisingly easy to miss it. So what I'm applying here is white lithium assembly grease, the same stuff I typically use on the crankshaft bearings, and I use it here, although you could use engine oil, although it's a little thicker, so it's less likely to run off. But remember, you cannot compress a liquid, so it's good to put a liquid or thick uh, grease between the bearing and the driver. That way, anything between the two typically will not damage the face of the bearing itself. Now, you don't need to be super particular. You don't get anything on the back of the bearing because these bearings, unlike a rod bearing or a main bearing, we're going to be lubricating the back of it and we're gonna be lubricating the journal or the bore in the cylinder head to help press it on. <clears throat> now, this washer is going to hold the bearing in place. Now there's a thicker one that's supposed to be used, although we don't have it in our toolkit and I had to do these bearings today. And the thicker one's the one you should use, but this washer will work, it'll just bend a little bit. Now. What I'm doing here is I'm lubricating the bore on each one we're gonna be installing with some engine oil. Now you might be thinking, isn't it a bad idea to lubricate the bore, lubricate the back of the bearing? Um, you know, if it's a split seam bearing, like for a rod bearing, you do not wanna put oil between the bearing and the bearing bore. But on a cam bearing, especially these where they're so large, you do wanna lubricate them. If you don't lubricate them, it's going to make installing them extremely difficult, more likely to damage the bearing or the head or the tooling. And these are such a tight fit that if you do not lubricate them, you might risk breaking your tooling or something like that. But not only that, when you install them, it's going to press out all of that oil, so you don't have to worry about it. So you can see here, I've got our bearing tool set up to install the new cam bearing. And you can also see I've installed a couple of the other ones. Now, since the cylinder head is off, I started in the center of the cylinder head, and then I'm working on the bearings back and forth. So I started on four, then I went to three, then I went to five. And the reason you want to do that is you never want to work through new bearings. Now, what do I mean by that? You wouldn't want to install, say, one and seven, and then work on two and six. If you were to drop the tool or anything, you could damage the bearings you've already installed. If the cylinder head is installed on the engine typically you're going to start from the rear then and work your way forward not working through the bearings now the bearings already on and you do not need to tighten this bolt very much usually i only go about finger tight lubricate the threads with the big retaining washer and the reason for that is if you do torque it or tighten it it can be very hard to get off once the bearings installed and you can see here i'm putting a little bit of engine oil clean engine oil on the back side of the bearing don't worry about it spinning the bearing or anything. The bearing will not move once it's installed and it's going to be super tight and it's going to push out all of that oil as it's installed. Now the joint location, once you install, start to install the bearing, the bearing will not spin. So you have to be particular when you first start not to move the rod or turn the rod or you might move the joint location on the bearing. Remember, it's supposed to be 20 degrees above horizontal. So... Just gonna slow it down here and then I'm gonna speed it up to show you what I'm doing. So I'm starting it off and once it starts to press in, I'm gonna check that the joint has not moved. Looks good, joint has not moved. So at this point, I can basically just install it the rest of the way, although I will check it periodically just to see if nothing's crazy going on, it's not getting bound up or anything. So here I'm going and you can see how much force it takes to pull this bearing in. I'm moving this 500 pound head around, it's twisting. And basically, the farther you get in, 
the bore, the harder it gets because there's more bearing contacting the head. Same with removing it, it's the hardest part is the initial break and then as you pull the bearing out, there's less contact area. So just checking to see how deep the bearing's been installed. If you have the thicker washer, it'll typically stop at the correct distance. This one using the non-thick washer, I have to check it. Typically flush with the rear of the bearing bore and the rear of the bearing's about where you wanna be. But we're gonna measure it. So D6 here is the front of the bearing to the front of the cylinder head, 13.76 inches, which is 13 and three quarters. So, gonna get my tape measure out here, and I'm not used to measuring things so long, but uh, we got 13 and three quarters inches to the very front of the cylinder head from the front of the bearing, and looks like we are right on the money. So, perfectly situated there, the joints in the correct location, as well as the oil supply holes. Let's talk about some destruction of the week. So this destruction of the week is an RV. And this RV wasn't here for any sort of air brake issue, but while we were under it, we noticed something. Uh, the main air supply line, look at that sucker going over the transmission, was twisted about five times around going to the air dryer. I bet this thing had some real problems building air pressure and the customer may not have known why. That's why. So you could see here I've installed all of the cam bearings and I'm ready to install the camshaft. Now this is getting a new camshaft and all new cam bearings obviously. The camshaft's being replaced because one of the injector lobes was bad. Now the cams on these are pretty heavy. They're about 80 pounds and it's hard to get them in place unless you have this guide tool. Now the guide tool is aluminum so it's softer than the bearing itself and typically you're going to lubricate all the bearings with either engine oil or white lithium grease or assembly compound and then I typically lubricate the drive tool and the camshaft uh, journals themselves with engine oil the engine oil is a little seems a little slicker than the grease but it's a little thinner and you're basically just going to go in slowly rotate it slowly if it starts to bind up or anything just stop do not force it at any point you're going to damage a bearing that way and you don't want to do that you just spend a lot of time installing them and as it slides in you're just going to make sure nothing's contacting nothing's damaging it's not binding up and typically you're going to have to stop a couple times to either rest or lubricate the bearing journals as well when you do that, you wanna stop with it resting in the bearing journals. You don't wanna rest the cam lobes on the bearings as the cam lobes are super hard and they're not meant to contact the bearings themselves. So as you can see, we're pretty much all the way through. I found if you make uh, really weird faces and grimace a lot, it really helps uh, help you know get the camshaft in there properly. Now, once it's fully seated in there, uh, you're just gonna rotate it by hand a little bit just to make sure that it rotates freely. If it's gonna not rotate freely, if it's gonna bind up or not spin by hand, something's wrong. You wanna find out now instead of after you've installed the head and installed the engine in the machine. Now the machine that this head is off of is actually a C15 that rolled over and uh, that's why we're doing all the cam bearings because they were damaged, they were oil starved as well as all the other bearings. And as you can see, rotates very freely by hand, no binding or anything, looks pretty good. So then you just take your guide tool off. And if you're gonna remove a camshaft, it's basically the same thing we just did in reverse. You'll use the guide tool and just slide it out the back, even if the head is on the engine. Now let's go over to RT. He's actually working on another project here. Same engine. And he's gonna be putting the crankshaft in. Now this is the way to put a crankshaft in. Engine's upside down. We've got all the uppers on the mains and our crankshaft just came back from the machine shop. All of the journals have been polished real nice. So we are air dropping this crankshaft in using our crane here. And if you've ever done mains under a truck, this, uh, this is really gonna spoil you. So basically, yeah, just using the crane here to drop it in place. We've already installed all of the uppers for the mains. And if you're thinking, well, where on the bottom? That's because the engine's upside down. But installing them right here, they've already been lubricated with engine oil and we're just gonna slowly drop it in place. And she will be ready to put the mains on, the main caps, and then the bottom of the main bearings in place and ready to go. Thanks for watching the video.